Great! Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the importance of evidence in crisis communication. And evidence is so annoying, right? And you think of lawyers doing this all the time, right? And of course, we in academia would do this too, right? So think of this in evidence. You can compose a very difficult to understand scientific argument, and the opposing party can likewise compose a difficult to understand scientific argument. And the trick is sometimes not who has better evidence or not, but who can communicate that evidence in a more convincing rhetorical strategy to stakeholders. I'll give an example. I've got this great boss now, and he's an economist. And what he does is he does expert witnesses for lawyer, uh, expert witness testimony for lawyers, right? And of course, each side will have their own economist, right? Um, you know, assessing you know financial liabilities, damages, blah 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 blah. You know. He can give one set of evidence, my boss, and the other economist can give a different set of evidence. And the trick is to compose this scientific method and this evidence in such a way that the jury will decide that my boss is right and the other economist is wrong, or his calculations are, are wrong. Or another example, right? We see all these arguments right now in the media about global warming, right? And some scientists say it exists, and some say that it doesn't. Right? It's all about evidence, right? I don't know if global, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that kind of a scientist, right? I don't know if global warming is a thing or not. I, I'm not, and I'm not capable of assessing it. But what I'll look for when I hear people arguing about it is which arguments make sense to me. To me versus somebody else, right? So again, using evidence can help an organization during a crisis. And that's exactly what Jack in the Box did. So yeah, USDA, uh, Food and Drug Administration, etc. They're all conducting these investigations and they start coming up with some different conclusions. Jack in the Box does their own investigation and as a result of the conclusion of this own investigation, they decide, they decide that actually Jack in the Box was not fully responsible based on evidence that they discovered. And they communicated their interpretation of their own evidence to their different stakeholders in such a way that raise the possibility that possibly, possibly, maybe some other organization, like a supplier, was partial to blame for this Jack in the Box E. coli crisis, right? So they kind of raise the doubt. They make people think, well, maybe, we're not sure, was it Jack in the Box? I don't know, I mean, the evidence says this, I, I don't know, right? So you go from anger at Jack in the Box to confusion. Whose fault is it? Okay. This is the use of evidence. The next one is going to be intent. People are going to make the argument, did Jack in the Box deliberately do this? You know, through carelessness, was it negligence? What was their train of thought behind this E. coli crisis? Great. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like, subscribe, comment below. I'll see you in the next video.